Hi, this is the Change and Grow Wellness Show, the show for you, the busy professional who wants to live a healthier, happier life with increased energy and productivity. I'm Jackie Grant and I'm your host. I'm your healthy lifestyle advocate. And today we talk, are talking about healthy, less toxic relationships. And we've got John Kenny, who is the relationship freedom guy. And I'll let uh, John tell you all about him. So tell us a bit about yourself, John. Welcome. Morning, morning. Nice to be here. Um, thanks for having me on uh, this morning. Um, yep. Yeah, so as you said, I am John Kenny. I am a, uh, a coach and I'm known as the Relationship Freedom Guy. I help or I coach people to manage toxic and unhealthy relationships um, and help them to live healthy, happier, not only relationships, but actually a happier life. Yeah. Um, because the toxic and unhealthy relationship, once we can break that cycle, uh, then everything else seems to be much easier to cope with and manage and we can focus on there are things in life that are actually really really help us and want us uh, that we want to help to move forward with brilliant okay so john tell us about what would be a toxic relationship what would you class as a toxic relationship uh so i, I would kind of slash it as in a toxic unhealthy um because toxic is kind of taking it to toxic would mean damaging um so if you've got, you're in a relationship which is maybe causing you stress constantly, where you, it's constantly on your mind, you're not sure how to behave, you are feeling controlled perhaps, uh, that uh, you're being manipulated, mm. that things don't go your way, that it's always about them and never about you. Um, and you generally feel this sense of draining energy. You don't ever feel like you've got a lot to, uh, of energy to do anything else mm. um, these are all kind of the outcomes of being in a toxic relationship and healthy relationship i would say is some you know if you're always arguing mm. bickering um again there's a sense of control manipulation lack of energy mm. you don't you feel better when you're not with them i think yeah. it's a really good sign mm. um, that you're in something that's not good for you Maybe you don't really look forward to spending too much time in their company. Yeah. Maybe you notice that it's always up and down, that you have a good time, bad time. Yeah. And if we do have those types of relationships, we hang on in there for the good times. Yeah. Um, but actually, if we really look at it, the bad times generally outweigh the good. Mm. And if they are coming up, then they generally are also uh, very uh, emotionally damaging. Yes. Yeah, insecurity, uncertainty, uh, and we're always having to work at it. So, what would you say if someone thought they were in a toxic relationship, but they wasn't really sure? They it might just be that you know they're having a few arguments here and there, but they're not really sure if it's toxic, if it's you know if it is to do with you know the relationship between the two people. What would you what would you say to them? Yeah, so I would, would look out for all the signs I've mentioned already. Is just to reflect on how you feel about being in this relationship. Mm. If there are some outside mitigating circumstances, so say there's other family problems or there's work problems, then you know you might be falling out because the uh, stress levels of other events are causing if difficulties in your relationship. Then you know that's mm. that's okay. You, you, we have a tendency to. to uh, kind of take those things out on the ones we love the most right because yeah. we're closest to them we expect them to be there to support us mm. uh, love us tomorrow and even if we are being a bit of a pain mm. um, uh, but yeah it's you know you it's for you to sit and reflect on where you are in your life if there's no outside influences that are affecting the difficulties that are in your relationship and it is just your relationship mm. and as i said earlier on reflect on those parts do you feel controlled do you feel manipulated? Do you feel you have to tell them everywhere that you're going? Do you feel mm. that they, everything is their way or no way? Mm. Do you find that if you're talking about yourself, they always turn it around on them? So if you've got a problem, they've got a bigger problem. Mm. Then, you know, if it's if it's that way, then you really need to check in within that what that relationship's about. If it is, like you said, just general bickering, okay, what's going on? Yeah. You know, what are we both going through at the moment, which could be leading us to to have a short fuse with one another? Yeah. You know? especially under lockdown. I think lockdown has been a, a great tester for some relationships. Exactly. A lot of things to the fore. 
mm. uh, a lot of time together um could be that so again mm. just break you know is, is he have you been living in each other's pockets for, for yeah. a bit long uh do you need some some of your own space and again if they mind if you have your own space then i would say that's not a very good sign yeah no definitely i mean exactly some of the the parts that you were saying is like you know relationships that i've had in the past where i feel like you know everything you have to do what they want to do and it's not about you and then when it, it's about listening to exactly what they're talking about but when you start talking and it's it's like not really heard <laughs> do you know what i mean um so i completely understand where you're coming from so what what steps can a person take when when that's, they start feeling that way okay so first again i think is to just check in with yourself um is this really go what's really going on for you um is this a pattern is this something that you've experienced before like you mm. said you know, had relationships before actually when this has been quite you know repetitive mm. there might be something out playing within our own subconscious and generally that's the case so when we're kids we learn how to do relationships so we form mm. our relationship patterns with other people and we form our relationship with ourselves. Um, if we have got used to doing something a certain way then our brain will look for familiarity your brain likes certainty on the whole so it will search out relationships that it recognizes mm. so you might find a very healthy relationship passes you by because your brain isn't aware that it exists mm. and then it sees something that it recognizes in somebody again this is all going on at a subconscious level it's the kind of energy that we're giving out the energy that someone else gives out and we mm. find that quite our brain finds it attractive mm. so we get back to these type of people and then we might find that we keep spiraling into these types of relationships over and over again so that's one thing i would check in with mm. um, because if we keep finding ourselves having those types of problems then there's something going on in our subconscious which is leading us to be there um and also why are you there mm. you know, what are you doing with your with this uh relationship if it's causing you so much stress so much anxiety mm. so much upset so much pain if it's causing you that many problems why are you there mm. what is it about you what is it about this relationship that means you're hanging on in there to to and, and allowing it to be the way that it is mm. one thing i like to work for my clients is you always have a choice yeah definitely you might not want to be on your own <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah. actually sometimes being on your own is the, the healthiest option exactly so, we, so, so you think that it could like it could be a pattern that could repeat itself really because like you're actually connected to that kind of relationship so you keep seeing it all the time yeah so right. you've got, there, there, there's, there's a part of your brain which actually looks for things for you mm. um, it's called your reticular activating system oh, yes your ras Mm. So if I said to you go outside now and just see as many voxel astras as, as you can, because that's now in your awareness, your brain will start to look for mm. it for you consciously. Um, and this is what happens when you, when you have, when your brain gets into a pattern, it will look for what it thinks you want or what you need, mm. um, which is generally the familiar. And if, your familiar is toxic or unhealthy with people, your brain is always looking out for it. So that's all you're generally gonna find. Mm. Um, so what we need to do is to check in and go, okay, I don't want that anymore, brain. Stop looking for that mm. for me. What I want is this. What kind of relationship do I actually want? And mm. then you start to implant new ideas into your mind. And if you mm. keep repeating that, so consistency is the key mm. to change the way that this happens. Um, then you can start to look for something completely different and then your brain goes oh okay well i'll start looking for something else it will take a while because we need to build new neurons in our brain mm. change the way that we do things um, but the, the more consistent you are with that the, the, the better and the easier it becomes for for your brain to be able to, to do these types of tasks mm. uh, so yeah it's about really checking in with you and saying okay what is this familiar have I done this before? Mm. Is this is this something? Is this is this new? It's very unlikely that you've had a, a series of healthy relationships, or you've had healthy relationships as a child, and then you find yourself in something so destructive. It's very mm. unusual. It mm. can happen, of course. Um, but again, why would you do that? Mm. What 
are you allowing for yourself? What aren't you allowing for yourself for you to kind of stay in this type of environment? Why are you hanging on in there when it's so painful? Mm -mm. John, you sound like you're talking to me. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe we need to have a chat. About that. <laughs> <laughs> so 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 what you can do is like kind of write down exactly what kind of relationship that you'd like and just kind of repeat that you know you know maybe like a mantra repeating that or listen to it or read it or you know put it on a voice recorder so that you're constantly having that in your mind yeah. um, rather than you being drawn to this other relationship that you, you don't really want yeah and because it is a, a pattern of kind of a relational style that we've got into it it, it can be that we also um, have a difficult relationship with ourselves mm. um, so if i keep having damaging relationships why am i doing that to me mm. is it about the relationship i have with myself that yeah. leads me to choosing relationships where i'm never happy or mm. eventually turn into something that i don't like yeah um, you know what is it about my choices so have I got a, uh, a space that I keep needing to get back to? So, mm. uh, my, my story myself is my, sa my safe space was to be by myself as a kid. Mm. It was very uh, toxic to be around my family. So I would spend a lot of time on my own. Mm. My then relational pattern became choosing toxic relationships so I could end up on my own. Right, right, yes. Well, I'd play out the relationships I'd had as a child, so my brain would go, oh, you recognise this, this isn't going to make you feel very good. Yeah. But you know what this is like. I call it a spiky versus cotton wool situations. So you know you're going to go there and it's going to hurt, so you're going to walk into the spikes, it's not going to kill you, so you keep doing it. Whereas you're missing out on this lovely cotton wool, soft, loving, caring stuff yeah. because you're not going to recognise it, so it just avoids it. It, it, passes, mm. it passes you by. Mm. Um, so, the, but then my space was to be by myself. I felt safest, even mm. though I was happy, mm. I felt safe on my own. Mm. So whenever I would finish with a relationship, I would feel so much better, mm. even though I was really miserable <laughs> because there would be like this weight lifted. Yeah, because I yeah. Myself, so I thought, oh, I'm safe, but mm. I'm really sad because here we go again. I've just had this really horrible, horrible kind of, you know, unhealthy relationship yeah and on the on the other side to that when i was in healthy relationships i would do everything i could to ruin them yeah so yeah. i would be a right git bag to be honest in some instances because i didn't know how to get out of it yeah because it was healthy because it wasn't toxic there was no reason for me to get out yeah yeah and I would create the toxicity <laughs> yeah. yeah so i could then go okay well this isn't working they don't like me very much anymore <laughs> <laughs> my safe space i'm back on my own yeah sure and i didn't know how else to get there yeah because i couldn't connect i wouldn't allow myself to connect with someone in a healthy way good so, so how did you overcome that john how did you overcome that first of all by recognizing i was doing it mm. the last relationship i had that was unhealthy i made a promise to myself i wasn't going to do it again mm. And then I met a couple of people after that and I thought, no, this is exactly the same as the stuff you're trying to avoid. Don't go there so mm. quite quickly. Um, and then it was just kind of really understanding myself. Okay, mm. why am I in this space? Why do I keep doing this to myself? How mm. do I feel myself? So I completely changed how I saw myself. So I went from someone who was completely unaccepting of who I was into someone who changed how I saw me and mm. started me and be more myself and uh and, and like who i was mm -hmm. worked on that area and then recognized that when i met my wife that oh this is all right it's mm -hmm. not, i couldn't feel the chaos i couldn't feel the toxicity i couldn't recognize it and i was like oh is this right and i thought no actually yeah, i need to go with this just to see how it goes because there was no I wasn't instantly drawn. There was no kind of nothing in me that was drawing me to it. And that, it felt mm. really And at the first, I thought, oh, this isn't right. There's no real, oh. Yeah, then I yeah. That, that, oh, was actually me craving chaos and um, saying, you know, I need that. I need an out. 
Yeah, 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 yeah. And there was no out. Mm. I thought, okay, well, this maybe it's about time you decided to not look for that out. Mm. And it worked out really well. <laughs> Brilliant. That's good. So yeah. tell me, like, so if, so for instance, if you were starting to work with someone, what would this, these be the first kind of steps that you would go through with them? It's like looking at their self first and then moving on to what relationships they had. Uh, so it's understanding where they are now, so mm. what are they there for, what help do they need, and then we start to explore their past. So once we can understand, the past will generally give us a lot of answers about where you are in the present. So uh, what types of relationships did you have growing up? How do you see yourself based on the experiences you've had throughout your life? Mm. And then we can then sort of say, okay, we can see why this is happening because you probably think this you probably you know you're probably carrying out this type of pattern mm. and then we start to change what we're doing mm. so understanding so it's like i like to think you know if you can understand something you can then start to accept it mm. and then you can start doing something about it mm. uh, if you don't understand what the problem is you can put all different things in place to say okay well i want this and i want that mm. but if you don't, it's like if you were to repair a car you wouldn't just take it in and then say, okay, it needs to be repaired. Okay, well, let me just change this and then see if mm. it works. Let me just change mm. that. And see if yeah. it works. Okay, let's do a diagnostic. Yeah. What's the problem? Okay, now we need to change this in order for this to function properly. Yeah. Um, exactly. and that's what we need to do with ourselves. It's what's the problem? And then we can start to say, okay, well, what's the solution? Good, good. So why, why would you think it would be important for someone to go to a coach rather than try and do this all themselves? Uh, because hopefully a coach will, if you go to the right coach, you know, mm. so, there's so many different coaches out there, mm. but to get someone that specializes or is an expert in, in what it is that you're struggling with, mm. um, they can see every, you know, what it's like when you're in it, it's hard to see what's really going on. Yeah. You know, if you're emotionally involved in something or if like, if you talk to friends, they give you their, they give, generally give you an emotional opinion. If you talk yeah. to family, an emotional opinion you are always giving yourself an emotional opinion it's hard for you to think um, mm. rationally less emotionally when you are in the middle of something mm. and, you know my trainings in back in my background in counseling so i've done a lot of therapy mm. so understanding those relational patterns that occur in childhood so attachment mm. um why we've developed this way as human mm. beings uh, so look for someone who's an expert in that area. They will help mm. you figure out why you think, feel, and act as you do. Mm. And then, then it's up to you then to say, okay, well, if I do this, I'd like to change that. Because yeah. I can sit with you and say, this is what you do, and this is why you do it. And you yeah. might go, thanks very much. I'm very happy. <laughs> yeah. I don't, I'm not ready to change. Yeah, sure. Uh, and generally when we do these things ourselves, uh, I've done a lot of, self-development workshops seminars webinars and i've worked with a lot of people in the past that have been on those and they take away certain bits and pieces but they're never able to really put it together yeah but also there's no real motivation there to change mm. okay well i understand that how do i put this into practice mm, mm. do i really want to put this into practice mm. Mm. and um, it it's a bit more motivating when you've got someone that's there that can give you some kind of steps to take and actually you know, kind of handhold you through the steps rather than you trying to, you know, mishmash the steps together and, uh, you know, come out with like probably not the right route that you wanted to get to. Yeah, again, and you might read a book and tells you to do this, that, and the other, and that could be the completely the wrong thing for you. Exactly. You know, you, you could put that into practice and they go, it doesn't work. No, this is never going to change. Why give mm. up? Mm. You know? you'll go okay well i'll try something else but hopefully when you work with a coach they'll be able to pinpoint exactly what the problem is mm. and help you to um put things into practice that will help you to change that yeah so and also there's accountability i think with a coach as well exactly you know exactly. with what you do you get people that don't want to turn up sometimes but they turn up because they're coming to see you yeah uh, and they know that what you're going to do is going to help them mm. And therefore, they turn up even if they don't really feel like it mm. um, because the appointment is booked. They don't want to let you down or whatever it might be, whatever reason. And there's accountability. I've not done this because, okay, I have done that. Okay, well, why haven't you done that? 
yeah. let's explore why you're not putting this into practice mm. what are you feeling about all of this again you know, these are not questions generally you're going to ask yourself exactly um and and they can help you to really kind of delve into that what's really going on for you mm. and move things forward brilliant so john let's um finish off with um your a case study of someone that you've worked with that's had toxic relationships and what's what's the what's been the outcome mm -hmm. okay so um i had one client who again one of the things that people get mistaken with as well about this is that you don't have to suffer trauma in childhood for this to happen it doesn't have to be a massively unha unhappy or unhelpful mm. environment Mm. And it could be just it's generally to do with your perception of what's going on around mm. you as a kid so one client i had she came to me um because she was uh, coming to the end of a marriage she'd recognized that this guy that she was with was very controlling manipulative and it, it was always about him she never got a say in their relationship and how it mm. functioned she realized that she'd done this before and she realized that she'd done this before that as well so she wasn't married before, but she'd been in a few relationships where she realised actually these are the kind of people that um, I end up with. Mm. So she came to me. We talked about her upbringing, and there was nothing significant in her in her childhood which you would think, okay, well, this is why you would feel the way that you do. But after more discussion, we recognised that actually her parents had a very loving, caring relationship. She was an only child. Mm. and they loved her very much and they they gave her lots of love and affection and encouraged her and everything was really great and you think oh what's the problem there well the mm. problem was that they loved them they loved each other right. so whenever they would show each other affection she would feel left out mm. even though they would then come back to her you know to, to give her the love and affection every time that was withdrawn from her she would feel insecure so she'd start to kind of chase her parents love right then she's going step... john keep going okay so then she would step away from the love as well so when she wasn't getting it she would shut down yeah. then when her parents were then available unavailable she just... so as she got older she started to develop this pattern with guys so mm -hmm. then um meet a guy would be quite reserved and uh keep herself to herself because she was worried about that love being taken away from her mm. be too close to someone in case that love was taken away from her. But as soon as these people would then back off, she starts to chase them. Right. Unfortunately, she was chasing people that really weren't worth chasing. Yeah. Uh, and that they were then, because she would then chase them, she'd give up all of her control. Mm. And they would take everything from her. So mm. they would start to dictate how the relationship worked. And then she'd end up staying with these people and through the whole time it just got worse and worse and worse and mm. worse until in a couple of relationships the other you know, people moved on because she was just too easy to push around mm. and occasionally then there was a couple of relationships where she was like okay i can't do this anymore I don't want to do this anymore it got too toxic and then she'd leave mm. and into then into the relationship so what we then by understanding what she was doing what her pattern was mm. she, remaining closed off because she was frightened of loss. And then when that loss occurred, she would chase the loss. Mm. Um, she was able to say, okay, well then what do I do about that? Yeah. Uh, and also it affected her self-worth. Yeah. So her mum and dad were not taking it. She then became, oh, maybe they don't love me anymore. Mm. And her loving. And she came to this conclusion in her head that she doesn't deserve to be loved mm. uh, consistently. That yeah. there must be her because this love keeps being given and taken away mm. so address that within her that actually that's not true that's just a belief that she's built up inside of herself and that she can allow herself to connect to people in a different way mm. once she started to put those ideas into practice um, she then was able to start embarking on healthier and happier um, relationships that's great. No, it's, it's t totally those things can happen, can't they? Um, you know, you, you, you lose someone and then you, you start chasing after them when it's actually, do you really want that person? Do you know what I mean? So it, it, yeah, I can see how that can happen. And in some cases you might want them because you're initially closed off because you're frightened of connection. Yes. You know, 
people find some people find connection really difficult again because they didn't really experience healthy connection as kids mm. to connect to someone at a deeper level frightens the life out of you yeah and your brain says oh okay now it's time to run <laughs> <laughs> yes uh, and again that can happen with other people so uh you know if you meet someone that's avoidant so they're you know they're generally avoidant people are pretty full-on so you'll find that you know some people ask me like why are people full on at the start and then all of a sudden they take a step back mm. because they're avoided. They're very good at the initial stages of a relationship where mm. there's no deep and meaningful connection. Mm. But as soon as that kicks in, their brain says, actually, no, we don't do this. This is, this is difficult. Stay away from this. And then mm. they shut down and start to move away. Yeah. If you're the kind of chasey person, you'll keep chasing them then, but they're just going to keep running and mm. you're going to like loads of pain because you're going to keep wanting them to care about you yeah because you've probably fallen for them because all the lovely stuff they were doing at the start yeah yeah <laughs> that stuff is gone mm. um, but some avoidant people don't run completely they still stay there but they've they've shut down mm. and then you find you're always constantly trying to get them to show you that affection that they showed you at the start um but it never comes mm because they can't do it they won't do it it's not they can't do it they can do it if they just think about it but again they won't do it because their brain's telling them not to mm. very interesting john very interesting <laughs> it's, it's, amazing. it's amazing how our brain works when it comes to this kind of stuff mm. definitely so john what are your final words for our listeners um so if you are struggling in a relationship or you recognize that you are uh you do repeat certain patterns as far as relationships are concerned. I would just think about you. Mm. you know, again, a lot of the people call me and they say, okay, I want you to change my boyfriend or I want you to change my wife or I want this to change with them. Well, actually that's not the right question. Mm. The right question is what do I need to change within myself yeah. in order to get what I want yeah. um, rather than what I've always had. Mm. Uh, so yeah, I think the question is, okay, what do I want? Would be one of the questions to ask yourself. Mm. why am i doing this um and also um am i ready to change because again i think it's tony robbins that says your motivation to change needs to be more powerful than your motivation to stay the same so we need to create a motivation to do it differently so yeah. what is the outcome that you're looking for yeah if this is my pain point now that i'm in and my motivation is down here yeah. then I'm not, gonna, I'm not gonna change what i'm doing so what is that here that i want that takes mm. me past takes, takes me past this pain point in order for me to get what i want from my life definitely definitely it's just, it's um just like um i'm doing a kickstart um challenge at the moment and it's, it's like um focusing on what why you want the specific thing and how you know your why is more important than anything else so mm. it's about finding out exactly what that why is mm. oh yeah definitely john so thank you john it's been great so john can you tell our listeners where they can find you yeah so you can uh, visit me on my website uh, which is uh, www.johnkencoaching.com mm -hmm. in contact with me there just click on the contact page send me a message if you want to talk about this in a bit more detail uh, you can just drop me an email at john at johnkencoaching.com um, and i'm happy to to have a chat with you about what you need brilliant Great, John. So it was really, really interesting having you on the show today. It's been really insightful, giving me some food for thought, that's for sure. Um, so it was, it, was, it was amazing. So thank you. Thank you very much for having me on. I'm glad it was useful. So Jackie Grant, your healthy lifestyle advocate, granting you better health and fitness, guys, signing off. So take care and have a great day. <laughs>